and welcome to our home group series entitled Lighthouse Culture. You know, last year we had a Sunday morning series entitled Creating Culture, where we defined our values. But now that we have established our 12 values, we are now calling this Lighthouse Culture. And I am just so excited that we have the opportunity to grow together, which is part of our vision statement, um, in our home groups, looking at these values. Today, we're going to be looking at the value, the Spirit takes the lead. Zechariah 4, 6 says this, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Have you ever been led down the wrong path? I think about, um, you know, something like when I was a teenager and um, I had some friends in my life who led me down the wrong path. Now, I made those choices, but they definitely were not good influences on me. Maybe you were like that, too. I think about uh, when GPS, you know, started coming around and how much we use GPS today. I think about many times the GPS takes me down the wrong path, um, even though, you know, it's supposed to know more than I do. Uh, I think about times when I've hiked with my family and, um, I think I know the right way, but, you know, maybe I've made a mistake and we have to turn around and go back a little bit. I'm just so thankful that with the Lord, we have the ability to be led by the Holy Spirit and never be led in the wrong direction. Amen? Um, when I preached this series last year, I, I spoke about how Scripture gave us a few ways that we saw the Holy Spirit take the lead. Uh, I began at creation, uh, where Genesis 1, 1 through 2 says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. It was void. But then it says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of those waters. The Spirit took the lead in creation. I spoke about how the Spirit took the lead uh, concerning the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Um, and we know that the Word was, is Jesus. Jesus then says in John chapter 14, verse 26, that when He would leave the earth, He would send the Helper, the Holy Spirit, it says. And it says that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things, bringing back to remembrance all that He said. So the Holy Spirit took the lead in creation. The Holy Spirit took the lead in the Word of God. The Holy Spirit took the lead in Jesus and His ministry, Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power and that Jesus went around doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil and that God was with him. We also see that the Holy Spirit took the lead in starting the church. Acts chapter 2 says that when the disciples were uh, praying together in an upper room on the day of Pentecost, that they heard a rushing mighty wind, that there was, uh, they saw tongues of fire sitting upon each individual. And then it says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And it was that power that, that, that prompted Peter to preach one of the, probably the, actually the first uh, message to a group of people, and they converted over to Christianity. Man, it was just it was awesome. That was the start. That was because of the Holy Spirit. Um, I also spoke about how the Holy Spirit still takes the lead in our church, how He dwells in our church, and He really dwells in all churches that recognize Him as Lord and Savior. Ephesians 4, 2.22 says this, that we are being built together, talking about a corporate thing. We too are being built together, becoming a dwelling place which the Spirit of God lives. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing that we get to be a place corporately when we gather that the Holy Spirit lives? And then lastly, I spoke about how the Holy Spirit doesn't just lead us corporately, but how He leads us individually. Um, he leads us in overcoming sin. Romans says that the power of the Holy Spirit makes us free from the power of sin and death. Um, how the Holy Spirit helps us 
to love God. John 4, 24 says that God is spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. But this is the one that I really want to think of us to think about this evening is finding God's will. Acts chapter 16 says this, that Paul and Silas, they were going around traveling and trying to spread the good news. And Paul and Silas were headed in one direction. But it says in Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10, that the Holy Spirit prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. And then in verse 7, where they started going to a different way, it says that they headed north, but again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So they listened to the Lord that, that night. They, they had a dream, and uh, then it says in, in the latter, later on in the verses that they decided to leave for Macedonia, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. And the reason why I want us to focus on this particular one of of finding the will of God is because this month we have been focusing on efforts to raise money for our missionaries. You know, missionaries are perfect examples of, of people who, like Paul and Silas, traveled to other regions of the world to preach the gospel, and they were led by the Spirit to do so. You know, our church supports over 50 missionaries every single month. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be able to share that with people. And people oftentimes are amazed by that. And, you know, some of these missionaries are global. Some of them are local. And the reason why we can support over 50 missionaries and continue to support missionaries is because of you. We can do so because of you. And the flip side of the coin is, is that we cannot do it without you. We do it because of you, and we cannot do it without you. We want our missionaries to be fully supported. That's the reason why we take faith pledges, and we encourage, we take the month of February to do so. You know, supporting missionaries and supporting ministries is very biblical. I was looking at Luke chapter uh, 8, where it says that there was three women, Mary, Susanna and Joanna, that when Jesus was doing his ministry on this earth, it says that they, these women help support Jesus out of their own means. Isn't that incredible that these women, like even Jesus needed support? And so if Jesus needed support for his ministry, how much more do our missionaries need support for their ministry? And we get to rely upon the Holy Spirit to tell us of how much we get to support them and how we should support them, how often we should support them. I was also looking at Paul's ministry. Paul's ministry was supported by a church. If you look at Philippians, this is a little bit longer verse than I'm going to read, so stick with me. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 says this. Paul is writing to the church in Philippi, and he says this. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news, and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At that moment, I have all I at the moment I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts that you sent me with Ephroditus. They are a sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. As I was reading this, I I just thought these phrases, let it be said that if no other church gives to missionaries, that the lighthouse will be the one to give. Amen? Let it be said that, that we gave more than once, just like the, uh, the church in Philippi gave more than once, that we gave more than once. That means a monthly commitment. One-time gifts are awesome, but I want to encourage you to give more than once. Let it be said that our missionaries, like Paul could say, have been generously supplied with gifts that we sent them. 
let it be said that we will receive a reward for our kindness and that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. I'm asking you this month to prayerfully consider to be led by the Spirit in making a monthly faith promise to give to missions. Some of you, this might be for the first time. Others of you, you do this every year. And I'm going to ask you that you would continue to do so. It would be a blessing to our missionaries. And it's a blessing to our church. Let the Spirit take the lead in how you give. We are now going to go into some discussion time. Um, Your group leader will ask you certain things regarding um, how the Spirit has made you, how the Spirit has helped you in, in ways to make decisions times when you didn't maybe listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, Maybe we can discuss also some times when the Spirit actually led you to actually give financially, and we can encourage one another. God bless you. Thank you so much for your willingness to gather together and grow together and to give to our missionaries.